When we interact with the flight management and guidance computer, or specifically when we interact with the auto flight system, we do so via the MCDU or via the flight control unit. The FCU is the middle part of the glare shield, also known as the eyebrow of the cockpit. In the FCU, we have controls that allows us to do short-term interfaces between the flight management and guidance computer and the flight crew. We use the FCU to select parameters such as heading, track, altitude, flight path angle, and vertical speed. We also use the FCU to engage the autopilot, auto thrust, arm the localizer, as well as changing between metric and in the altitude window between metric and uh, feet if display is needed in meters, for example. Here I have the FCU enlarged a little bit and it's because I want to talk specifically about the FCU for a while, talking about how to operate it and how it is designed. So if you take a look here, you will see, and we're always talking from left to right. From left right here, we have three sections in the FCU. First section here is the speed section. Then we have here the lateral section. And finally, this part here is the vertical section. The three sections allows four specific controls. The first one is the speed knob, the heading knob, the altitude knob, and the vertical speed flight path angle knob. Take a close look and you'll be able to see that the particular, that the particular knob right here are specifically designed and they are not the same shape. Specifically, you can see it here on the heading knob. The heading knob is like a flower around, but the altitude knob doesn't have quite as aggressive grooves on it. But this is to ensure it is in line with the cockpit Airbus philosophy that it should be easy to identify and not mistake when you take control knobs, whether that's push buttons or push buttons or control knobs on the FCU. Each of these four knobs that you see right here, they can be engaged in either managed mode or selected mode. You see the knobs here, they have the option to turn them around, you're changing the value. 32 clicks is an entire rotation of the knob. Setting the value is only the first step in engaging what you want to do. Let's take speed for example. Let's say I want to set a speed. If I turn the knob in the window above, it will show the speed. But it will not engage that speed. It will not follow that speed unless I tell it how to engage it. And that's the managed or selected mode that I was referring to. Once you have selected a value, you then either push the knob in or you pull the knob out. That is the engagement of that particular value and mode. If you push any of the knobs in, the aircraft goes into managed mode and the flight management and guidance system will take over and do what is needed to fly the speed profile that is programmed, the flight plan in a lateral way that is programmed, or the vertical profile that is again programmed into the system. But in the managed guidance mode, we have an aircraft that will manage everything from what is already programmed into the flight management and guidance system. So what you select right here in terms of values is irrelevant because it's gonna take the values from what is already pre-programmed. The easy way to remember it is if you push the knobs, you're pushing them away from you and you're telling the aircraft you have control managed mode, you have control. But on the other hand, if you take any of the knobs and you pull them towards you, you're saying, I have control. 
That's what we call selective guidance. Selective guidance allows for short-term navigation and it allows us to override what the flight management and guidance computer is doing from its own pre-programmed flight plan. Let's assume that we are flying along the flight plan and we're in managed mode, also called nav mode in the ladder. That means the aircraft is flying along the flight plan that is pre-programmed. Over a waypoint, it will automatically turn to the next heading, etc. We know when the aircraft is in managed mode because, as you can see right here, first of all, the value in the window above shows dashes and next to the value, there's a dot. This shows that it's managed mode and the value is not coming from this window. The value in which it's flying is coming from the flight management and guidance system. There are two more ways that we can see. If we take a look at the display right here, we can see that the speed in this case is targeted by a magenta target. Look at the speed tape and you'll be able to see the magenta target. Magenta means managed. If you look up top in the PFD display, in the third column, we can see the nav. It means the aircraft is navigating itself. And of course, we can take a look here at the MCDU page for the climb. And it shows there on the left column, the third line, managed speed is. And in the first line on the left column, managed as well. When the aircraft is in managed mode, as I said, everything comes from the flight management and guidance computer. And it is done by pushing any of the knobs in. Back to the scenario I was referring to, let's say that we're on a nav mode, the aircraft is guiding itself laterally, but we want to change the heading. This could be as per ATC uh, restrictions or ATC instructions, or it could simply be to avoid weather, etc. So what we will do is we will take the heading knob and we will pull the knob saying, I'm taking control and then we will turn it to the heading that it needs to fly to. The autopilot will still be flying the aircraft, but it is now guided based on what we say. There's the thing. This is short term navigation because the aircraft will fly that heading until you tell it to fly another heading. It will fly that heading around the earth if you don't change anything. That's why it's short term navigation. Same thing for speed. You set a speed 250 knots and you pull it. The aircraft will fly that speed. And that could be dangerous in the long term because if you climb at a fixed indicated speed, the true airspeed will change based on altitude. And that could get you dangerously low on speed and possibly result in a stall scenario. We use this, as I said, for short term navigation but we do use it. And when we use selected guidance, as you can see here, the value shows up in the window. The dot next to the value is not there. And the target itself changes from a magenta target. You can see the speed is now a blue target. Take a look at the altitude tape as well and take a look at the 7,000 that is written. It's also blue it means it is selected. If we take a look at the MCDU, we can also see that the client page here changed to selected mode. The active mode in the upper left corner is now selected. This was the other two knobs here are used for altitude and vertical profile management. The altitude window and the altitude knob here will always show the value of the altitude. However, you are still engaging either managed or selected mode based on pushing the knob or pulling it. If I set here in this case, we're at 3000 feet. Let's say I set flight level one, two, zero, and then I 
pull the knob. The aircraft is now going to start a climb up to 12,000 feet, but it will do what we call open climb. It will climb, but it will disregard any cost index we have in, any economy speed for climb, as well as any constraint that there might be built into the flight plan. If, on the other hand, we set flight level 1 to 0 on the altitude window and we push the knob, we're telling the aircraft to climb to flight level 1 to 0 or 12,000 feet. But it will do so in what we call manage mode on climb mode. Not open climb, but climb. In climb mode, it will obey the constraint on the flight plan if possible, and as well as climb at economy speed and take the cost index that is programmed into the equation. See, this becomes now an optimized way of climbing to meet a specific target, whether that be a high or low cost index, saving fuel, saving time, saving money, whatever it is, and constraints are obeyed. What we want depends on the situation, so we always have to be aware of whether or not we want to do managed or selective. Even if you push the knob right here and you go into managed climb, the altitude window will always show the value in the window. It's not like the speed and the heading window, which will go blank with dashes and a dot if it's managed. The last knob is the vertical speed knob. The vertical speed knob allows us to set a vertical speed, minus, plus or minus 100, 200, 1500 feet per minute climb or descent. The vertical speed does not have a managed mode. It is a selected mode regardless. Select the value and engage it by pulling it and the aircraft will start climbing or descending at that particular vertical speed. This aircraft has another feature that we will get a little bit more into later, but I want to highlight it right now. And that is, instead of flying a heading or flying a vertical speed, this aircraft can fly a track and a flight path angle. Flight path angle is a fancy way of saying track, but in a vertical plane rather than track in the horizontal plane. But remember from flight planning, when you're flight planning something, you're always taking wind into consideration. So if I have a strong crosswind, I would have to put the nose of the aircraft into the wind so that my track remains the heading that I really want to fly, but the heading of the aircraft is off set by whatever the cross track error is. Well, in this aircraft, we have indications that shows track. So we can change the heading to a track by simply pushing the middle round knob right here. It changes the heading window here to a track window. So now you're not setting a heading value, you're setting a track value, and the aircraft will fly whatever heading it needs to follow that track. But it changes not just the heading to track, it changes the vertical speed up over here to a fly path angle. And that's what's illustrated right there. It's illustrating a negative 3.5 degree angle in which the aircraft will, in this case, descend at. It is particularly useful when flying approaches, coming in on an approach and having to fly a final approach course of 182. The crew will simply engage the track mode, and even if you're flying it manually, the track will provide the exact track to fly regardless of where the wind is coming from because you're not worried now about the heading you're flying. And coming in for an ILS or a non-position approach, starting your descent at the final approach fix or intercepting a glide slope, we can simply set the value of the vertical profile to minus three degrees, pull the knob and the aircraft will maintain a three degree slope, not a six five or seven hundred feet per minute rate of descent which will change as you're well aware of based on headwind tailwind etc this will give it a track to fly it is very useful when flying
flying the aircraft, whether or not you're flying manually, whether you're flying short-term selective guidance, or when the aircraft is flying fully managed. 